Welcome to American Presidential History. Dive into the captivating world of U.S. presidents through engaging stories that bring their lives, legacies, and the times they lived in vividly to life. George Washington, the first United States president, 1789 to 1797, known as the father of his country, played a crucial role in the American Revolutionary War. As the commander-in-chief of the Continental Army, Washington masterminded a surprise attack at Trenton, successfully capturing Hessian garrison. His exceptional leadership on the battlefield culminated in a resounding victory at Princeton, further establishing Washington as a distinguished military commander. Despite Brandywine's defeat, Washington's leadership limited casualties, allowing the army to endure. His tactical brilliance at Saratoga convinced France to join the cause, while the coordination with French forces at Yorktown led to the surrender of General Cornwallis, ending the war. Washington's played a crucial role in achieving American independence, solidifying his legacy as a military leader and founding father of the United States of America. George Washington, father of his country. John Adams, a visionary statesman, emerged as the second president of the United States. Adams played a vital role in the American Revolution. With his sharp intellect and legal expertise, Adams contributed significantly to the drafting of the Declaration of Independence. After serving as the first vice president, Adams ascended to the presidency in 1797. John Adams's legacy as the second president of the United States endures. Adams will forever be remembered as a passionate advocate for liberty and a founding father who helped shape the course of the nation. John Adams, the father of American independence. Thomas Jefferson became the third president of the United States. His brilliance shone through writings like the Declaration of Independence, inspiring Americans in their fight for freedom. As a member of the Continental Congress, he shaped the nation's destiny. After the Revolutionary War, Jefferson's reputation grew as a statesman. He served as the first Secretary of State, shaping foreign policy under President Washington. In 1800, Jefferson ran against President Adams, winning with persuasive arguments. On March 4, 1801, he took office. Jefferson's impact on American history is undeniable. Thomas Jefferson became the third president of the United States. James Madison, a resilient statesman, became the fourth president of the United States. As a delegate to the Constitutional Convention in 1787, Madison's ideas shaped the U.S. Constitution. He advocated for a strong central government and individual rights. Co-authoring the Federalist Papers, Madison defended and explained the Constitution's principles. Madison's journey to the presidency reached its pinnacle in the election of 1808. Madison emerged victorious, succeeding Thomas Jefferson. Madison's presidency was marked by both triumphs and challenges, particularly during the War of 1812. James Madison, father of the Constitution. James Monroe, the fifth President of the United States, Monroe issued the Monroe Doctrine in 1823. This policy asserted that European powers should no longer attempt to colonize or interfere with the affairs of nations in the Western Hemisphere, establishing the United States as the dominant power in the Americas. Expansion and Acquisitions Under Monroe's presidency, the United States experienced significant territorial expansion. The acquisition of Florida from Spain in 1819 and the Missouri Compromise of 1820, which admitted Missouri as a slave state and Maine as a free state, Monroe helped to maintain the balance between free states. Monroe prioritized internal improvements such as road construction and canal building to improve transportation. Monroe worked to strengthen national unity by promoting a sense of American identity and pride. His administration fostered a spirit of nationalism, emphasizing the importance of a strong federal government. James Monroe, The Monroe Doctrine John Quincy Adams, the sixth President of the United States, born into a family of esteemed politicians, Adams was destined for greatness. During his presidency, Adams focused on advancing the nation's infrastructure, proposing ambitious plans for roads, canals and a national university. His vision aimed to connect the growing nation, laying the groundwork for future progress. Adams was a strong advocate for scientific exploration and knowledge, 
he championed the establishment of a national observatory and supported the collection and dissemination of meteorological data contributing to scientific advancements within the country. Adams skillfully navigated foreign affairs during his presidency. As an unwavering opponent of slavery, Adams used his voice and influence to fight against its expansion. He continuously challenged the institution, even presenting abolitionist petitions in Congress, reflecting his commitment to equality and justice. John Quincy Adams, The Adams Vault Andrew Jackson, the seventh President of the United States, rose from humble beginnings to become a prominent leader. His military triumph at the Battle of New Orleans in the War of 1812 propelled him into politics. Elected in 1828, Jackson championed populism and the power of the common people. He fought for expanded voting rights, enabling broader participation in democracy. Controversy marred his presidency. The Indian Removal Act of 1830 led to the forced relocation of Native American tribes known as the Trail of Tears, tarnishing Jackson's legacy. Jackson clashed with the national banking system, opposing the Second Bank of the United States. His actions to dismantle the bank and empower state-chartered banks polarized the nation and contributed to economic turbulence. His influence on American politics cannot be overlooked. Andrew Jackson's leadership style and controversial policies left an indelible mark on U.S. history. Andrew Jackson, expanding presidential power. Martin Van Buren the eighth president of the United States, rose to prominence as a skilled politician and dedicated public servant. Born in 1782 in New York, served as the vice president under President Andrew Jackson. Van Buren advocated for governmental reform and sought to strengthen the federal government while improving bureaucracy. Martin Van Buren served as president from 1837 to 1841 during a challenging period marked by the economic turmoil of the Panic of 1837. He played a crucial role in the resolution of the Amistad case, securing the rights and freedom of African captives aboard a slave ship. He negotiated the Webster-Ashburton Treaty, settling border disputes between the United States and Canada. Van Buren oversaw the expansion of the U.S. postal system and improvements in mail delivery. Despite his efforts, Van Buren faced opposition and criticism, which ultimately led to his defeat in the 1840 presidential election. Martin Van Buren, America's Eighth Leader William Henry Harrison, the Ninth President of the United States Born in 1773 in Virginia, Harrison had a distinguished military career before entering politics. Harrison served as a general in the U.S. Army and gained fame for his leadership during the Battle of Tippecanoe in 1811 and the Battle of the Thames in 1813. These victories against Native American tribes solidified his reputation as a war hero. Elected as president in 1840, Harrison's presidency was short-lived, lasting only 32 days. Unfortunately, he fell ill with pneumonia shortly after his inauguration and passed away, making his tenure the shortest in U.S. history. Harrison's death brought Vice President John Tyler into office setting a precedent for succession in cases of presidential death or disability. Despite his abbreviated presidency, William H. Harrison's military accomplishments and economic policy proposals have left a lasting impact. William H. Harrison, 32-Day Presidency John Tyler, the 10th President of the United States Born in 1790 in Virginia, Tyler served as president from 1841 to 1845, he assumed office after the sudden death of President William Henry Harrison, making him the first vice president to succeed to the presidency. Tyler signed the Tariff of 1842, which aimed to protect American industries from foreign competition. One of the key accomplishments of Tyler's presidency was the annexation of Texas. He played a crucial role in securing the admission of Texas as a state in 1845, expanding the territorial boundaries of the United States. He advocated for a strict interpretation of the Constitution and opposed excessive federal authority. Tyler was the only president to serve without a vice president throughout his entire term. After leaving office, Tyler actively supported the secession of Virginia and served in the Confederate House of Representatives during the Civil War. John Tyler, from vice president to president. James K. Polk, 
the 11th President of the United States. Born in North Carolina in 1795, Polk had a strong focus for the country during his presidency from 1845 to 1849. He was known for his commitment to expanding the country's territory and securing its interests. Polk advocated for the Walker Tariff, which reduced import duties and promoted free trade, stimulating economic growth. President Polk successfully negotiated the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which ended the Mexican-American War and secured vast territories, including California, New Mexico, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and parts of Colorado and Wyoming, greatly expanding the United States. Polk negotiated the Oregon Treaty with Great Britain. The treaty established the 49th parallel as the border between the two nations, securing the majority of the Oregon Territory for the United States. Polk prioritized the modernization and expansion of the U.S. Navy. Polk's presidency coincided with the California Gold Rush. James K. Polk, Shaping a Nation Zachary Taylor, the 12th President of the United States, Born in Virginia in 1784, his presidency, which lasted from 1849 until his untimely death in 1850, it was his remarkable military record that caught the attention of the American people. Taylor rose through the ranks and became known for his leadership and bravery on the battlefield. Taylor pursued policies aimed at maintaining peace with Native American tribes and preserving their rights, promoting a more humane approach compared to previous administrations. Taylor supported California's admission to the Union as a free state, which contributed to the balance of power between free and slave states. Taylor's presidency brought a significant influx of settlers and economic growth to the region. Zachary Taylor's military legacy left an indelible mark on American history. His bravery, leadership and dedication to duty serve as a reminder of the qualities we value in our leaders. Zachary Taylor, from Battlefield to Oval Office. Millard Fillmore, the 13th President of the United States. Born in New York in 1800, he served as president from 1850 to 1853. Fillmore played a crucial role in brokering the Compromise of 1850, which maintained the balance between free and slave states, lowering tensions between the North and South. While controversial, Fillmore actively enforced the Fugitive Slave Act, which aimed to capture and return escaped slaves to their owners. Fillmore supported the establishment of public schools, helping to promote accessible education for all. He opened diplomatic relations with Japan through the Treaty of Kanagawa. The Whig Party faced internal divisions and eventual dissolution in 1856 due to the passage of the Kansas-Nebraska Act in 1854. This controversial act permitted the expansion of slavery in the territories and created significant rifts within the party. Despite its relatively brief existence, the Whig Party exerted a profound influence on American politics. Millard Fillmore, The Last Whig Franklin Pierce, the 14th President of the United States, held office from 1853 to 1857. Born in 1804 in New Hampshire, Pierce served as a brigadier general in the Mexican-American War. Pierce fought in the war and was praised for his bravery and leadership. Under Pierce's administration, the United States acquired land from Mexico known as the Gadsden Purchase, which aimed to facilitate the construction of a transcontinental railroad. Pierce's presidency witnessed the highly controversial Dred Scott decision by the Supreme Court, which deepened the divisions over slavery. Pierce signed the Kansas-Nebraska Act in 1854, which allowed for popular sovereignty in determining the status of slavery in the territories. Pierce's presidency is often viewed as one marked by the issue of slavery, ultimately leading to the outbreak of the American Civil War. After leaving office, Pierce retired from politics and returned to his law practice in New Hampshire. Franklin Pierce, The Gadsden Purchase James Buchanan the 15th President of the United States. He served as President from 1857 to 1861. Born in Pennsylvania, 1791. Buchanan had a long and distinguished political career, serving as a U.S. Representative, U.S. Senator, Secretary of State, and Minister to the United Kingdom. Buchanan's presidency was marked by economic turmoil, including a severe financial crisis known as the Panic of 1857. 
The crisis led to widespread unemployment, with workers experiencing wage reductions or losing their jobs altogether. Many businesses faced bankruptcies, resulting in job losses and economic hardships. Buchanan confronted tensions with the Mormons in Utah, leading to the controversial Utah War. Buchanan struggled to prevent the secession of southern states, and his presidency witnessed the secession of several states, ultimately leading to the breakup of North and South. Buchanan's presidency is often viewed as one of the least successful in American history. James Buchanan, the Forgotten President Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States from 1861 to 1865 he was the first Republican president in U.S. history. Lincoln's presidency was dominated by the American Civil War, which began in 1861. Lincoln led the Union, composed of the Northern States, against the secessionist Confederacy. Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation in 1862, declaring that all enslaved individuals in Confederate-held territory were to be set free. He delivered the Gettysburg Address in 1863, he advocated for voting rights for African Americans, and pushed for the passage of the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery. Despite the ongoing war, Lincoln ran for re-election in 1864 and won a second term. Abraham Lincoln's leadership during the Civil War preserved the Union, ended slavery, and shaped civil rights in the United States. However, on April 14, 1865, his legacy was tragically cut short by his assassination. Abraham Lincoln, The Fight for Freedom, Civil War Era Andrew Johnson, the 17th President of the United States Born in 1808 North Carolina, Johnson served as President from 1865 to 1869. Johnson became president after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. He granted amnesty and pardons to many former Confederates, which drew criticism and accusations of being sympathetic to the Southern cause. Johnson favoured a lenient approach to Reconstruction, which clashed with the Republican Congress, who sought harsher punishments for the South. Johnson vetoed the Civil Rights Act of 1866, but Congress overrode his veto, marking the first time that a presidential veto was overridden. Johnson was responsible for the purchase of Alaska from Russia in 1867, known as Seward's Folly. He was the first US president to be impeached. The impeachment trial occurred in 1868. Although Johnson was not removed from office, his impeachment left a lasting impact during a difficult period in the aftermath of the Civil War. Andrew Johnson, The Impeachment Trial Ulysses S. Grant, the 18th President of the United States 1869 to 1877, graduated from the United States Military Academy at West Point in 1843 and served as a career military officer before entering politics. During the American Civil War, Grant rose to prominence as a Union general known for his leadership and strategic victories. He played a crucial role in the Union's victory over the Confederate States of America. Grant's most notable military achievement was his successful campaign to capture Vicksburg, Mississippi, in 1863. After the war, Grant served as commanding general of the United States Army. Grant's presidency was marked by efforts to reconstruct the South and protect the civil rights of newly freed slaves. He also supported the enforcement of voting rights for African Americans and signed the Enforcement Acts. He established the Yellowstone National Park as the first national park in the United States in 1872. Ulysses S. Grant, from Civil War General to Commander-in-Chief. Rutherford B. Hayes, the 19th President of the United States, 1877 to 1881. Hayes served as a Union Army officer during the American Civil War. The election of 1876 between Hayes and Democrat Samuel J. Tilden was one of the most disputed elections in U.S. history. The election results were complicated by allegations of voter fraud, violence, and voter suppression, particularly in the southern states. As part of the Compromise of 1877, which resolved the election dispute, Hayes agreed to withdraw federal troops from the southern states, effectively ending Reconstruction and allowing Southern Democrats to regain control. He signed the Bland-Allison Act, which provided for the coinage of silver 
and vetoed the Chinese Exclusion Act, restricting Chinese immigration. He was an advocate for Native American rights and pushed for reforms in Indian policy during his presidency. Rutherford B. Hayes was the first president to use a telephone while in office. Rutherford B. Hayes, the controversial election. James Garfield, the 20th president of the United States, served in office for a brief six and a half months, from March 4, 1881, until his unfortunate assassination on September 19, 1881. He was shot by Charles J. Guiteau. Garfield distinguished himself as a Union Army general during the American Civil War. He displayed a fervent commitment to civil rights, actively fighting against segregation. Garfield dedicated 18 years of service to the U.S. House of Representatives before assuming the presidency. Garfield exhibited strong advocacy for education reform and supported open immigration policies. Garfield held the distinction of being the last president to be born in a log cabin. To honor his memory, the USS Garfield, a United States Navy ship, was named after him. Additionally, the James Garfield Memorial Library was established in his honor, ensuring his legacy, James Garfield, the assassination that shattered a nation. Chester A. Arthur became the 21st President of the United States, 1881 to 1885. Arthur's presidency was unexpected following the assassination of President Garfield. Despite his political background, Arthur surprised many by advocating for civil service reform during his presidency. He prioritized modernizing the U.S. Navy. Arthur recognized the importance of a strong naval force for the nation's security. The Pendleton Act of 1883 aimed to ensure fair hiring and promotion, ending the spoils system, introducing merit-based federal employment. Under Arthur's administration, the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 restricted Chinese immigration to the U.S. for 10 years, marking the first federal law limiting immigration based on ethnicity. It prohibited Chinese laborers from entering the country. It remained in effect until 1943. The Chinese Exclusion Act stands as a somber reminder of the country's history of discriminatory immigration policies. Chester A. Arthur, Chinese Exclusion Act. Grover Cleveland served as both the 22nd and the 24th President of the United States. He was the only president to serve non-consecutive terms. His first term was from 1885 to 1889, and his second term was from 1893 to 1897. Before entering politics, Cleveland worked as a teacher, a lawyer, and the sheriff of Erie County, New York. His 1884 campaign slogan was, A public office is a public trust. He issued 1,107 pardons during his two terms in office, earning him the nickname the Veto President for his frequent use of the veto power. Cleveland was against the annexation of Hawaii and refused to sign a treaty for annexation submitted by pro-annexation forces in Hawaii. Cleveland is the only president to get married in the White House. He married Frances Folsom, the youngest first lady at the age of 21. Grover Cleveland is remembered for his dedication to fiscal conservatism, honesty, and resistance to unnecessary government intervention. Grover Cleveland, the veto president. Benjamin Harrison, the 23rd president of the United States, served from 1889 to 1893. He came from a prominent political family with his grandfather being William Henry Harrison. As a Republican, he won the 1888 election, defeating President Grover Cleveland. Harrison's notable accomplishments include signing the Sherman Antitrust Act in 1890, aimed at curbing monopolistic practices. Five states joined the Union during his term. North Dakota, November 2, 1889. South Dakota, November 2, 1889. Montana, November 8, 1889. Washington, November 11, 1889, and Idaho, July 3, 1890, expanding the nation's influence westward. The Dawes Act of 1887 sought to assimilate Native Americans by dividing tribal lands. His presidency faced labor strikes, notably the 1892 Homestead and Pullman strikes, leading to federal intervention. Harrison also signed the first law providing funding for agricultural research. His presidency left a significant impact on the nation's growth. Benjamin Harrison, adding states to the nation. Grover Cleveland served as both the 22nd and the 24th president of the United States. He was the only president to serve non-consecutive terms. 
His first term was from 1885 to 1889, and his second term was from 1893 to 1897. Before entering politics, Cleveland worked as a teacher, a lawyer, and the sheriff of Erie County, New York. His 1884 campaign slogan was, A public office is a public trust. He issued 1,107 pardons during his two terms in office, earning him the nickname the Veto President for his frequent use of the veto power. Cleveland was against the annexation of Hawaii and refused to sign a treaty for annexation submitted by pro-annexation forces in Hawaii. Cleveland is the only president to get married in the White House. He married Frances Folsom, the youngest first lady at the age of 21. Grover Cleveland is remembered for his dedication to fiscal conservatism, honesty, and resistance to unnecessary government intervention. Grover Cleveland, the veto president. William McKinley served as the 25th president of the United States from March 4, 1897, until his assassination on September 14, 1901. He is known for his support of protective tariffs, particularly the McKinley Tariff Act of 1890. McKinley's administration oversaw the acquisition of territories like Puerto Rico, Guam and the Philippines. He signed the Gold Standard Act of 1900, establishing gold as the only standard for redeeming paper money. He was re-elected to a second term in 1900. His administration focused on promoting American industry. McKinley's face was featured on the dollar 500 bill, which was last printed in 1945. At the Pan American Exposition, McKinley was targeted by Leon Cholgosh, who carried out the act of shooting him. Despite all the medical efforts, he passed away eight days later. The nation mourned the loss of its 25th president. The McKinley National Memorial in Canton, Ohio, honors his memory. William McKinley, Pan American Assassination. Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th President of the United States, served from 1901 to 1909. With a commanding voice, he exemplified the daring and adventurous spirit of the Rough Riders, leading them to a resounding victory in the Spanish-American War. Roosevelt, as President, was an advocate for workers' rights and child labor laws. He championed fair business practices and pushed for the regulation of large corporations to prevent monopolies. He sent the Navy's Great White Fleet on a remarkable worldwide voyage, showcasing American naval strength. His administration oversaw the construction of the Panama Canal. Roosevelt administration created five national parks, 18 national monuments, and 150 national forests. In 1912, Roosevelt survived being shot in the chest. He continued delivering his speech with the bullet still lodged in his body. He went on to form the Bull Moose Party a new political party advocating for progressive social and economic reforms. Theodore Roosevelt, the Bull Moose Party. William Howard Taft was the 27th president of the United States, serving from 1909 to 1913. Before entering politics, he excelled as a skilled lawyer and judge. Taft's presidency faced challenges in balancing the progressive and conservative wings of the Republican Party. His notable achievement was the introduction of dollar diplomacy, using the nation's economic might to foster stability abroad. Despite his earnest efforts, Taft's popularity within his party waned, leading to Theodore Roosevelt's challenge in the 1912 election. The ensuing Republican split allowed Woodrow Wilson to secure the presidency. Post-presidency, Taft became the sole former president to assume the role of Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, serving from 1921 to 1930. The 16th Amendment, ratified during his tenure, fundamentally changed the tax landscape, enabling the federal government to collect income taxes from individuals and businesses. William Howard Taft, The Sixteenth Amendment. Thank you for watching. Subscribe now at American Presidential History. Woodrow Wilson, a leader of the progressive movement, was the 28th President of the United States, 1913 to 1921. After a policy of neutrality at the outbreak of World War I, Wilson led America into war in order to make the world safe for democracy. Woodrow Wilson's victory in the election was largely influenced by the Republican vote split between Taft and Roosevelt. As the 28th President of the United States, he successfully guided the nation through World War I and championed the New Freedom Agenda. Among his notable achievements was the establishment of the Federal Reserve System in 1913, a decentralized banking system comprising 12 regional banks 
and a Federal Reserve Board. This move aimed to stabilize the U.S. economy and prevent financial crises. Additionally, Wilson signed the Clayton Antitrust Act into law in 1914, which bolstered existing antitrust laws and provided greater protection for workers' rights. In response to Germany's unrestricted submarine warfare, Wilson led the United States into World War I in 1917, asserting that America's involvement aimed to make the world safe for democracy. Warren G. Harding served as the 29th President of the United States from March 4, 1921, until his untimely death on August 2, 1923. He was one of the most popular sitting presidents. Harding's campaign slogan for the 1920 presidential election was Return to Normalcy, emphasizing his promise to bring stability and unity to the country after the turmoil of World War I. His presidency saw the enactment of the Fordney-McCumber Tariff Act, which raised tariffs, and the Emergency Quota Act, which restricted immigration. Harding signed the Washington Naval Conference Treaties in 1921 to 1922, aiming to reduce the potential for conflicts between major world powers. He signed the Four Power Treaty, which aimed to stabilize the Pacific region. Harding was known for his approachable and personable demeanor, making him one of the most popular presidents in his time, despite the later scandals. The Teapot Dome scandal, one of the biggest controversies of his administration, involved corrupt officials leasing federal oil reserves to private companies in exchange for bribes. Warren G. Harding, America's most popular president. Calvin Coolidge served as the 30th president of the United States from 1923 to 1929. He assumed office on August 2, 1923, following the death of President Harding. He completed the remainder of Harding's term and was then elected for a full term in 1924. Coolidge was the only U.S. president to be sworn into office by his father, a notary public. His presidency is often associated with a period of economic prosperity known as the Roaring Twenties. His policies favored limited government intervention in the economy, low taxes, and reduced federal spending, which contributed to economic growth during his time in office. In 1928, Coolidge's Secretary of State, Frank B. Kellogg, co-authored the Kellogg-Bryan Pact, also known as the Pact of Paris. This agreement aimed to renounce war as an instrument of national policy and promote peaceful resolution of disputes between nations. Coolidge chose not to seek re-election, surprising many political observers. After leaving the White House, Coolidge published an autobiography titled The Autobiography of Calvin Coolidge in 1929. Calvin Coolidge's presidency was marked by economic prosperity and a hands-off approach to government. Despite his reserved demeanor, he left a lasting impact on the nation and its policies during a pivotal time in American history. Calvin Coolidge, Roaring Twenties. Herbert Hoover, the 31st President of the United States, served as president from 1929 to 1933. Hoover gained international recognition for his humanitarian efforts during World War I. He led the Commission for Relief in Belgium, which provided food to millions of starving people in war-torn Europe. Before entering politics, Hoover established himself as a successful mining engineer and businessman. His expertise in mining consultancy earned him the moniker The Great Engineer and paved the way for his later career in public service. Among his notable accomplishments, Hoover's crowning achievement was overseeing the construction of the Hoover Dam, originally known as the Boulder Dam. This monumental infrastructure project aimed to regulate floods, provide irrigation water, and generate electricity on a grand scale. The Great Depression left an indelible mark on the world economy, impacting nations far and wide. Tracing its origins back to the infamous 1929 stock market crash in the United States, this global phenomenon had far-reaching consequences. During Herbert Hoover's presidency, the nation faced dire circumstances with the unemployment rate reaching an unprecedented peak of over 20% in the aftermath of the 1929 stock market crash. Even to this day, the Great Depression remains one of the most pivotal economic events in history. Its enduring influence continues to shape economic policies and practices, leaving a profound impact on the generations that followed. Franklin D. Roosevelt, the 32nd U.S. president, served as president from 1933 to 1945. 
Roosevelt holds a unique record as the only president to serve four consecutive terms, making him the longest-serving president in American history. His notable contribution was the New Deal, a program of economic reforms and social initiatives aimed at overcoming the Great Depression. Key components included the Civilian Conservation Corps and the Social Security Act. Struck by polio in 1921, Roosevelt battled disability, using fireside chats to connect directly with the public, addressing their concerns and explaining policies. During his presidency, the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, thrust the U.S. into World War II. Roosevelt played a crucial role in leading the nation through the war and forming the Allies' coalition, attending conferences like Tehran and Yalta. He adopted the Good Neighbor Policy, fostering improved relations with Latin America. His 1937 court-packing plan, aimed at reshaping the Supreme Court to support the New Deal, faced opposition. In his famous speech in 1941, Roosevelt outlined the four freedoms that he believed all people deserved. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. Tragically, Roosevelt passed away on April 12, 1945, while still in office. Thank you for watching. Subscribe now at American Presidential History. Stay updated with the latest videos. Follow at American Presidential History for more content and shorts. Like, share, and support the channel's growth. Subscribe now. www.youtube.com. American Presidential H History.